So I found a super easy way to optimize your Divi buttons for any device that doesn't involve adding unnecessary padding left and right of the text to make the button seem larger. Now this is super easy. We're gonna go through two examples here. One, the old unoptimized way of doing it and two, the new way. And I guarantee once you see this tutorial and once you learn how to do this, you're gonna be using this in your future Divi projects from now on. So let's take a look at this first example here and the more unoptimized way to add buttons to your Divi website. So we're gonna go into the module settings here. You can see that we have our text in here with a bunch of characters. I wanted the text to be a little bit longer than usual to show you how it's unoptimized when it comes down to smaller devices. Let's quickly have a look at the design tab here and how we're adding this space left and right of the text, of course, is gonna be through padding left and right. Now on desktop, this is absolutely fine because the screen is large enough that we can add padding left and right without the text being squashed in. So even if I was to make this button wider with 100 pixels left and right, on tablet as well, that's gonna be absolutely fine. You can see here that the button can breathe and the text is still in the center here, unaffected by the padding left and right. However, on smaller devices, if I go down to phone here, you can see now that the text is pushed in and forced to go on three lines. This is because of course, we have the padding left and right. So essentially two big blocks left and right of the text that's pushing it in and forcing it like this on mobile, which of course isn't the best look. We always want our text on our CTA buttons to be simply one line. Now what we can do here is change the padding on mobile to 10 pixels left and right. We can go in here, maybe even make it 20, but on smaller devices, then again, we're still running into that issue. Now we can go back into design, go to the button and change the text size as well. So if I come down here to, where are we? Button text size, click my mobile icon, make sure it's set to mobile and change this to 18 pixels. Now you can see that our button is a little bit more optimized, but this is the unoptimal way to do this. So this includes more what I call admin side of work. So this basically means that you have to go in and with every button, you have to then go through your different sizes for desktop, tablet, and mobile, and make sure that the padding is changed on mobile, tablet, etc., to make sure that that text isn't squished in but that's not truly responsive. So what we wanna do is use a few lines of code to make sure that no matter what the screen size, the text can stay exactly as it is without being affected by unnecessary padding left and right. So let's go back out to our desktop view here and we're gonna look at this second example. Now you can see the buttons basically look the very same. However, the spacing left and right of this text within the button is done in an entirely different way. So let's go into the settings here, design, spacing, and you can see here that our padding left and right is set to, well, zero. There's no padding left and right. Now, how do we do this? We actually go into the advanced tab, custom CSS, and the main element settings here, and I actually have two lines of CSS. So our first line says width 100%. So let's get rid of this max width command here. And you can see now that our button extends to 100% of its parent container. Now, this is obviously not a good look. We want the button to be contained at least. So we're gonna add this second line, which is max width 400. Now I set it to 400 because this visually looks good, but of course we can increase or decrease the size. So if I wanted to set it to 450, even 550, if I happen to have more text or maybe even less, if I happen to just have a bit of text on the button. But let's go ahead and set this to 450. Now you won't notice much difference here. Visually, it looks the same. However, there's much less admin work here because if we go down to tablet and see here, same thing that the button has enough space to breathe. But on mobile, you can see now that we didn't need to change the text size, but the button still looks good. That's because there's no longer padding left and right pushing the text inwards. It's now simply empty space that allows our text to breathe as the website responds to the different screen sizes. Now you can see here on the very small devices, we still run into that issue where the text goes onto two lines, but that's gonna be an easy fix now. We just go into design button, go down to the text size, select the mobile option, and let's maybe change this to 20. And now you can see when we go to the really small devices, it's just those really small ones, the under 340 pixels, that's gonna go onto two lines. So not the worst case scenario there, but more importantly, on the major devices, you can see now that text is allowed to breathe and the button can move in and outwards without being affected by the padding and that text isn't forced onto two lines or three lines even too early. Hey you guys, so editing Alan here. And just as I was going through the video, I had it in the back of my mind that there was another thing that I used this CSS for. And I guarantee you it's something that you've come across before with your clients that's actually impossible to do when using padding. So say you've got multiple buttons on a page. So let's take, for example, we've got these few here and they all have different copy. So let's say this one just says join now. 
Oh, God, if I could spell. Let's get rid of that. And then this one, for instance, says um, click here. And then this one, let's do one more. Let's do submit now. So now notice that all of the buttons look the very same size. Now, this is because, of course, we're using that CSS in the advanced tab with 100, max with 450. Now, this is very aesthetically pleasing because all of your CTA buttons are exactly the same dimensions. Whereas if we're using padding and I've had clients come to me before where they want all of their CTA buttons to look the same. And without this, it was simply impossible because say, for instance, if I change the copy on this one, I am now having to go in to the padding. So if I go to spacing, I'm basically guesstimating all the time as to how much padding I need to add to these to make them look universally the same as the buttons above and beneath them on the pages. So you can see here about 161 pixels each side and that, that looks universally the very same. However, if the client comes in, happens to want to change the CTA again, and let's just click on this, we'll change it to sign up. All of a sudden the button's the incorrect size and you have this client messaging you saying, why aren't all the buttons the same size on the page? So that is another fantastic use of these two lines of CSS to make sure that you no longer get messages or requests from clients asking for all of the CTA buttons to remain the same size, no matter what contents within them, use those two lines of CSS and you'll never come across that issue again. So that's the optimal way to do your buttons on your Divi website, far better than just adding padding left and right and having to go through the different devices and optimize that padding. Just use those two lines of CSS that are available to you in the description beneath so you can start using it on your future Divi builds to completely optimize your buttons. So I hope you got some value from that. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Divipreneur channel for more videos coming up soon. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.